Greetings, friends. It's a Lancer again. And there is a new league of season coming to Path of Exile tomorrow, actually, by the time of recording this video. And it's gonna be great. It's gonna introduce so many cool things like entire like world building or like town building, crafting systems, huge changes. Like it's pretty much an entirely new game, and it's kinda is Anno in the new Path of Exile on top of just the game as it is already. But Path of Exile sort of has this reputation of being way too hard to get into, right? People say you need 2,000 hours of playtime to even understand like 10% of it. And I can see that, absolutely. So the question obviously is, even though the league looks really cool, but with Path of Exile 2 on the horizon, is it too late to get into Path of Exile 1? Especially with this league. And I will say no. Absolutely not. Because not only is the game actually just getting through the campaign and getting a first feeling for it, it's actually not that difficult as people make it out to be. The end game is where stuff gets difficult, where you have to learn things. But just playing the game, getting to the, the funny stuff, that is not that difficult. And you will figure it out along the way anyway. It's really an end game with all these mechanics and millions of different mechanics and crafting systems and stuff. That is a little bit complicated, yes. And some things might look overwhelming at first. I will also make a video on how to get into it easier. But if you want to play it, go for it. First of all, the game is free. It's entirely free. You have to pay zero dollars to play it. So why not give it a try? Right? Also, the new league will introduce a lot more mechanics that make it easier. Because as I said before, I feel like the devs are trying to make Perfect Exile more accessible to the masses. PoE 2 would definitely go in this direction. And PoE 1 is already also doing this with the upcoming Settlers League. For example, not just with the quality of life improvements that you can tell at the bottom here. Hold up, there is support if I don't need that. Um, these circle things mean that that's an aura that is constantly on. And usually when you die, this goes away. So you have to recast them. In the new season, you will not have to do this. So just little things will always be active. Little quality of life improvements that are very nice and make the game really much better. So what I would recommend is that you actually just play through the campaign once. The campaign has 10 acts. It's like two parts and 10 acts. Um, just play through it once. Now, and don't even think about all the endgame stuff initially. You just get a feeling for the game, how it works and how it is played. It's, you learn all, all this by just playing the game, so nothing crazy about that. One thing is... Um, it, can, it, it, it literally depends on... Are you a guy that always looks for builds and how to play perfectly? Then you want to check out Zizarin on YouTube because he has great starter build guides. I'm going to show you. So what you do is you go to YouTube. He's called Zizarin up here, right? Zizarin. That's him. And then you check out. He has his League Starter. It says it here, right? League Starter Builds. This is by the one, the one I'm going to play. And in there, he explains how it works, how to build that character, how to use items or what items to get and all this. Initially, this might seem a little bit overwhelming. Once you get a first feeling for the game, it's much easier to understand that. However, I wouldn't actually recommend you do this. I think what you should be doing is you actually just play the game and figure things out yourself. Because this way you learn much more about the game and get sort of get a feeling for what works and what doesn't. I know if you open the skill tree, right, this is very overwhelming for most people because it's fucking huge. But for example, just to give you a simple example, these huge dots down here, they, these pretty much just explain the class you're playing. There are seven classes, right? So I have the witch here, so this is this point. So the witch is sort of up this area. And this is the temple, this is sort of this area. This is a sign which sort of has all of it. So it's not actually the whole tree, right? It's mostly just this area in which you yourself if you want to deviate like i did here you can't do this and this is sort of the greatness about you you can't go all the way into anything else it's probably a bad build if you go all the way down here but you can't do it it's sort of the unlimited possibility to do whatever the fuck you want that's sort of what this what this is about right ascendancies and all that this is all later you get to it it's fine now one thing path of exile has it's notoriously bad at explaining to you how mechanics work like you encounter randomly some dude while walking through through the game, it unlocks a new mechanic, and there is no explanation whatsoever how it works. <laughs> That's just how Path of Exile does it. I wonder if they will change this in 
PoE2. I really wonder if that will change, because that is a bit of a problem in this game, absolutely. But again, you don't need most of these, right? For example, I'm ri right now in my hideout. I don't even need this through the whole campaign. You're rarely there. This is really more important later in the end game. So initially, you don't really need this. Again, just play through it. You will figure most of it out yourself. No problem. Also, it has a very, very friendly and open community. I noticed this while streaming the game. I only have 50 hours in this game, right? So I know nothing about the game. Nothing whatsoever. So I really did this myself. I just played through it and figured things out. I made a lot of mistakes, but people were very open to help me. And now I'm a streamer, so obviously people in chat help me. But you can just go to anyone's stream, not even mine, just someone else, and ask people in chat. Community is very nice. Do not ask people in global chat out here. That is useless. They will just troll you. Someone earlier asked if they can get any help on how to play Path of Exile, and the response was, you just click on mobs, which is not very helpful. <laughs> so, ignore that. Global chat is useless. Talk to people in the streams. They are very helpful, but they are very open to new people getting into this game. So that's that's very, very powerful. Now, um, what Path of Exile has is a lot of these currency things. If people talk about currency, what they mean is all these orbs and, and stuff. What they do is, you have complete reign over the itemization in this game. You can change everything. Like if I have an item like this, for example. It has implicits, the first two at the, at the top. Then it has the level requirements and all that. And it has the affixes, the blue ones at the bottom, right? The, all these can be completely changed with these orbs. You can reroll them, you can add one. You can even turn a um, magic item into a rare item. All this kind of stuff. And this is what all these orbs are, right? This is what all this does. Most of it you don't need. You can also change the sockets. And you can change the colors of the sockets. So you can change everything. And this is what makes it sort of unapproachable initially, because there's so much you can do. Whereas in Last Epoch, for example, the crafting is very simple. It's very easy. Here, it's not. Okay. But also you don't need it initially. You just get your item, your items, and then you get going. Very simple. Don't be overwhelmed by all that stuff. You don't need it, okay? It's also not how your stash will look like. This is a special staff stash you have to pay for. This is what it will look like mostly. So, all good. Ignore that. You don't need all that. Um, now, this is a witch. I started with a witch, and people have told me many times over, and I've seen it myself, that the witch is not a good class to start with. And I agree. Um, you're much better off with some sort of strength-ish character like either you go with the templar that is the sort of strength caster version strength and int or um, just with the marauder straight away of warrior because the witch playstyle is a lot around kiting right? you cast your stuff and then you have to kite it at least the one the build i'm running so it's a bit difficult you have to understand the mobs you have to understand the game better so this comes all later just start with a class, like the Templar, for example, is a great class, or the Marauder, which is basically just your warrior. Um, it's just easier to get into the game. And then later, once you understand the basis of it, you can go and try different classes. Now again, there will be a video that probably goes out tomorrow, I'm not sure, um, where I sort of give you an initial start on how to play the game as a noob. This is what I learned, my mistakes I made while leveling and getting into the game. So you can learn from my mistakes. This video was just sort of a base idea that the game isn't actually as hard as you think it is. Initially, getting into it is just fine if you just want to try it. And I'm sure you're going to be hooked because it is a great game. It's a lot of fun. And especially if you are a seasoned ARPG player, there is so much you can do in this game that you have unlimited possibilities. It's just very, very powerful and very great. Just it takes, once again, to the end game and min-maxing takes a lot of time to get there. But initially, you don't need it. So again, the game is great. Definitely try it. It's free. There is nothing to lose. And the new season is coming out tomorrow. So definitely check this out. Actually, it's today by the time this uh, video goes out. Yes. So check it out and you'll be good. And I will see you in the next video.